The next step is orbit. So here you can see the laminar papers here is already exposed. Yeah. So again, I'm going to use a Fourier elevator. I'm going to dissect and remove the laminar papers here. And I'm, I can already see the middle ductus muscle. So I'm going to use my Fourier elevator again, dissect. That's the entry model artery coming into view. And I'm going to dissect until I can see how the anterior head model artery entering the is entering the orbit here. Okay, the same way now. Can I have a curet? So now we're using the fourth instrument, the curet. Uh, can you hold the, the head for it? Okay. Yes. So to, to do optic nerve decompression, put a curet in, and you can just dissect the bone away. That's optic nerve decompression being done. Yeah. And this is what I'm doing now. The entire dissection is exactly what I do at home. So this and wherever is, this I is operate. Orbital decompression, right? optic. Optic, uh, optic. No, it's optic. Until you open the periodic sheet. Uh, sheet. Nerve sheet. Uh, uh, this is the optic nerve, no? Yeah. Do, yeah, you, do you open the nerve sheet uh, or yeah, uh, you don't open the ring, it? Cut the ring. Wait, wait, after this. Wait. Patience, my child. Patience, my child. <laughs> Let me take out all the bone first. So the, yeah. it's a very good question. Okay. Do you remove the peri the perineural sheet of the of the optic nerve yeah. or no? So if the comp if the compression is external, which means that it's just a tumor that is compressing, this is enough. No need. Yeah. If your compression is internal, which means it is uh, optic neuritis okay. or something. You open it. Okay, good. Now I'm happy. Can you see the optic nerve? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, yes. Things decompress all the way to where it enters intracranial to become to become the uh, optic chasma. Yes. Sickle knife. So if 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 the uh, you have optic neuritis, yeah, which means there's edema inside. Yes. Then what we do is we cut the perineal sheet like this. Yes. That's optic nerve. Can you see? Yes, sir. Can you see how thick the perineal sheet is? Yeah. So it's very difficult to damage the optic nerve. See how thick the, the, the sheet is, yeah? yeah? And then you have to come across hmm? and cut the ligament of Zil. Analyst of Zil. Yeah. Sir, uh, you are given the perineural incision lower down. There's a chance yeah. that the ophthalmic artery can get injured. Very good question. Yes. So I'm going almost midline. Can you see? Yeah. Your ophthalmic artery is always inferior 90% of the time. Okay. That's your artery. Down there. Can you see that? Uh, not that well appreciated. Here. Your artery will be down here. Okay. So right. as long as you go in the middle, look at where my incision is. It's yeah. in the middle. Okay. Fine. Okay? So the artery mm. would originate from here. Okay. Which I will, that's your artery. Yeah, I got it now. Okay? Can yes, you see, guys? Sir. Yes. Can you see how low it is? Yes. It is almost inferior. So as long as you go middle like this, okay. you're quite safe. Fine. So now let's go into the orbit. Sir, so uh, question. Sir, yeah? Before that, I, yeah, I, sure, sure. I can ask. Sure. So in case of yeah. post-traumatic optic neuropathy, yeah. so what is the limit of the incision you yeah. give in the perineural sheath? Is it, is it at the site of the injury or how far should we, you know, uh, open the sheath? Oh, you mean the optic neuritis? Yeah, uh, post-traumatic so like optic post neuropathy. Therapy, post if it's post-video therapy, you need to cut the whole thing. Optic neuritis is very rarely localized. No, sir, post-traumatic optic, uh, optic neuropathy, post-traumatic, in case of a trauma. For that I just remove the external part. Okay, sir. But I will always remove all the way up to here. But the traumatic uh, optic neuropathy, I will not make this incision. We will only make this incision if there's edema. You may have a CSF leak, but the CSF leak stops on its own. Okay. So and now... In, sir, in case of uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, uh, in that case, what do you do? Do we open the perineural sheath and what is the extent of the incision? No, in but case, we don't open the, the neural sheath for idiopathic intracranial pressure. Okay, so we just expose the nerve without incising the sheath, sir? In yeah, it depends on the indication why we're doing the surgery for. So that's the anterior and model artery. Yeah. That's the posterior and model artery. Guys, can you see? Yes, sir. Can you see how it's tenting away? Sickle yeah. knife? Sir, where does the... Uh, Intracranial optic nerve start. Is there oh, any I'll landmass? <laughs> I'll, that's good. I want to face. I'll, I'll show you later. I'll show okay. you when I do when I do the skull base. Done. 
Yeah. That is the anterior model artery, guys. Can you see? Yeah. Yes. So we're coming supraorbital, okay. and we're coming to the orbital fissure already here. Yeah. I'm crossing the midline, and that's the orbital fissure. Yes. Sir. So this is trans orbital orbit via the nose. Yeah. That's orbital fissure. So now you can actually go mm. into orbital structures to the nose as well, as long as you're above. And you can see how the anterior model artery will never get damaged. They just get stretched. Yeah. Okay? And they go between the superior oblique and the middle rectus muscle here. Yes. The same way you can see how the anterior model artery and the posterior model artery are just stretched. And there's an orbital fissure. And your optic canal will be here, just about here. Okay. That's your superior orbital fissure there. Okay, okay. guys? Sickle knife now? Sir, it would Sorry. be easier to bipolarize the anterior model artery. But why? Like, it's not bleeding, it's not causing you problem. Can you charge more by bipolarizing this? No, right? <laughs> Sir, no, okay. uh, you were saying about the bone between the superior orbital fissure and the optic canal. That is the yeah. optic strut or something? Oh, that's lower down. Okay, lower down. That's orbital fissure, that's lower down. Okay. So now, I'm going to cut the peri, uh, the peri orbita. Yeah. So most people will cut in three lines. Yes. Me being born lazy as I am, I just make like an apron, okay. and I cut and remove the whole thing like an apron, which is much easier in real life than in cadavers, but we will try. There you go. Yep. Can you see, guys? Yeah. So instead of doing three lines, I just remove the entire peri orbita as much as I can like this. So now we are looking for muscles now. Yes. So here is orbital fat, and typically a lot of orbital fat. Posturally, there's very few orbital fat. I'm going to remove the orbital fat so that I can identify the Rectus. middle rectus muscle. That's your middle rectus muscle. So if I go a little bit above, superior I should be able to identify Third, no. the superior oblique as well. Where is the junction? The junction is here. Just about here, it's the junction of the middle rectus and the superior oblique. Guys, can you see here? Yes. So if you enter here, here, now we are between the middle rectus Superior. You actually go intracornal to remove tumors from here. Yeah. The same way, if we dissect lower down, we should be able to identify the inferior rectus muscle. Okay. There. So this is the junction between the superior limit of the middle rectus, the inferior limit of the middle rectus. That's the inferior rectus muscle. Can you guys see that? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes. So now I'm just going to cut this. So now we are going to go intraconal. So I'm going to go inside the cone. So now we are going dissect intraconal. So sometimes if we are lucky, oh, beautiful, oculomotor nerves. Third now. Yes, yep. sir. No. Okay? Yes, sir. Yes. This must be because I have uh, Alina and Teja next to me. <laughs> Can you guys see that? Very nicely yeah. seen. So this supplies the middle rectus muscle, the oculomotor nerve. So I'm going to go deeper inside now and see whether their luck will let me find optic. the optic nerve. optic nerve. Do you think we can get it? Yes, sir. Can. <laughs> it all depends on how much fat we have. Because we have only one and a half hours. I want to show you as much as I can. So this is the ocular motor nerve there. There. I think I had a glimpse of the optic nerve. Yes. Right. That guy? Optic nerve. Great. Yes, Please great. clap for Alina and Tita. Yeah, for sure. the... And for you too. Oculomotor nerve. Can you see? Yes. That's the view of the oculomotor nerve here and the optic nerve very nicely seen. Yes. Okay. So here, you can actually go above the optic nerve. So there, I've gone above the optic nerve. Those are the branches of the vessels along the optic nerve. And if we are lucky, we can go under the optic nerve there. I'm going under the optic nerve, and you can see the ophthalmic arteries branches under the optic nerve. Can you see? Yes, so sir. we are below yes. the optic nerve, going almost to the other side already. Okay, that's orbit, guys.